afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Financial Survival, sponsored by Discount Gold and Silver Trading. I'm Melody Peterstrom, and today is the 27th of February, and uh, we are in the year of 2009. And again, thank you for joining us. And this program is brought to you by Discount Gold and Silver Trading. 1-800-375-4188. That is 800-375-4188. And if you have a chance, take a moment to visit our website. You can listen to the programs there and listen to the archives. I post it on a weekly basis at discountgoldandsilvertrading.net, discountgoldandsilvertrading.net. And, folks, if you have any questions for the program, you can send them to discountgoldandsilver at yahoo.com. Discount Gold and silver at yahoo.com. So you can send your questions there regarding your gold and silver coin and investments. And of course, questions regarding uh, that you would like answered on the pro. Um, so we have quite a few, well, a few that came in today. So it's Friday and a lot I've of things treat. happened this week. So make sure you get us those questions. Uh, gold today, um, a fairly strong day considering how hard they wanted to Take it down, but we are at 942.70, down 380. We have silver down two at 1313, and we have platinum up 16 at 1073, and we have palladium at 199. So, um, coin prices are fairly uh, even from yesterday. They're fluctuating between five and ten dollars. In fact, this morning. Uh, we had price lists um, that came out, and I would say there is, there's probably about a $10 drop. But yesterday they didn't uh, barely move at all with the drops that we've seen this week in gold. So not a bad not a bad day in coin prices. Give us a call at 800-375-4188. That's 1-800-375-4188. And with today being Friday, we have Robert Chapman joining us from the international forecaster, editor, and publisher. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon, Melody. It's been a busy day today. Yes, it has. <laughs> this is program number four for me, and I still got my voice, which is pretty good. That's very good. And uh, they try to rally the, um, the, the, the market firmly about two and a half hours before the close, but it just didn't stick. Uh, it was up uh, down about 80 they took it back to a plus 10 or 20. It just didn't work, and uh, it was off 119 on the day. That's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, that's 7,063 in round figures. And uh, we have clearly broken down and through all support from 1994 and 2002. Uh, we're looking at 6,000 to 6,600. Uh, then 5,500, then 5,000, then 4,500, then 4,200, then 3,800. And that, I think, is where we will end up if we are lucky. That means that pension profit sharing plans, insurance companies with their investments are going to be off somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. And that is not very good. <laughs> and um, that's where this is all headed. I wish I had something better to report. Uh, gold's up a dollar forty in the access market, which is unusual, and silver's up thirteen cents. Uh, gold was up eight, and then went down seven. They tried to drill it; they couldn't do it. It came back, as Melody just told you, off three eighty on the spot, and uh, uh, looks like in the in the April close, we were probably off around uh, around five dollars, and then. Uh, in the access market, uh, we, um, in the access market, we're up a little bit. But anyway, uh, what does all that mean? It means that gold and silver are trying to find a bottom. I was looking for 930. We saw it yesterday. Maybe that's the bottom. It could go to 900. But I don't think so. It, it's acting very well. And uh, the market's acting putrid. Gee, I haven't used that word in a long time. <laughs> and uh, um, the um, 
the dollar uh, was uh, mixed today. Uh, what do you have on the USDX? I have it up 0.19 at 88.09. You know, I have a little dissertation in the U.S. section tomorrow about why the dollar struck. And I'll see if I can tell you simply why. As you know, there was a lot of deleveraging. And when hedge funds and others sell assets, they have to be in the form of dollars because that's the way that the hedge fund settles. Dollars in, dollars out. Unless, of course, you go bankrupt and nothing goes back out. But that's not the case. The case is that people in the hedge fund industry and in banking who had to sell assets for one reason or another had to convert them to dollars. And that's why the dollar's been strong. Now, in Europe, you've got a problem for countries, 16 of whom, whom use the euro. The rest of them have their own currencies, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, etc. And they have to be able to keep the domestic end up. At the same time, I don't think they want their currencies to go much lower. I mean, we've seen a fall from 160 to 125 on the euro. And I think that, you know, the Europeans, particularly the Germans, are saying, enough already. I mean, we have a fairly priced currency in the midst of a terrible turn down. We don't want it any lower because you've got to remember, when you have a strong currency, or stronger than it should be, you're paying more than you should for oil and other imports. So the Europeans are going to be selling dollars over the next year in order to buy their own currency to keep it from going lower because I think they like the currencies where they are and they're going to need that money in their own currency for domestic consumption. These plans that are being made for stimuli that's a plural of stimulus, incidentally. <laughs> we used to have a big argument about that in Latin when I was a kid. But it's stimuli. Uh, A-E on the end. Uh, that's pronounced as I in Latin. But anyway, um, that means that the dollar is not going to break out over... What was that high I had at here? 88, 46 and a half. 88.46. It's not going to break that. It'll waddle around. I think it'll slowly go down over the next year, and after that it'll plunge. All the currencies are going down against the dollar. All of them. And that's going to continue. Because who'd want them? They don't have any backing. Oh, the euro does, but it used to be 15% in gold, and God knows what it is now. They won't tell you that. My guess is around 6 or 7%. Better than nothing but um, not what they should have. In fact, when they were forming the euro, the Germans and the French both <laughs> wanted to use 28%. And it was decided 15% would work. Well, it's not there anymore. Everybody else has a fiat currency, as far as I know. So they're all going to go down against gold, just like they have been for the last four and a half to five years. And that's why you buy gold and silver coins and shares, so that... When they go up, you'll be able to grab that buying power that's been given to you because you own gold and silver. The antithesis of the wrecking of assets. And that's what's going on right now. Assets are being wrecked. Well, what's wrecked? Yeah, the value of your house goes down. That's simple enough. It was selling for 500 and now it's down to 250 I mean, you've just had $250,000 worth of wrecked assets. Asset deflation. It's going to continue for a while, too. Not only in housing, but in other things. And the track that 
the U.S. government and other governments are on, the central banks as well as their treasuries, is wrong. And they know that. They know it's wrong. They've all studied history. They're all very smart. It's deliberate what they're doing because they want world government. And they're all in on it. And if they're not, they're not in on it, they go along with it. And if they don't go along with it, that one or two or three or four or five million dollar g- job a year goes. And they don't have it anymore. And they can go and work driving a truck and make $45,000 a year or 50 or whatever it is. And so that's why you don't hear anything off of Wall Street. It's the same reason why economists and analysts don't say anything about the bad side of the economy because they'll lose their jobs. 